Thanks, Kirk. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you all for your patience and flexibility, uh, given the development of last week. So uh, I'm at home, isolating, uh, feeling good, and uh, hope it continues to be that way. Uh, I realize I'm fortunate uh, to be able to say that so very obviously um, from what we've seen. This impacts everyone differently. So uh, while I'm here, I've been participating in meetings and uh, practices, and I just want to make sure that uh, you all know our coaches, players, I can't say enough just about our staff, how they've responded. They've done a great job. Coach Schmetting has stepped up and uh, we've been able to operate like we normally would during this week um, in those meetings and on the practice field. So uh, as I said on Friday, uh, we have plans in place for this. And uh, certainly, you know, when things happen with COVID, um, the, the teams that are able to navigate this and uh, implement the plan properly uh, and execute it at a high level are gonna be the ones that I think are gonna be most successful navigating through this pandemic. Because uh, as we've seen, you know, that uh, coaches, uh, there's been some coaches out and uh, the ones that we've had step up and, and the way we've operated, I think um, those guys have done a very good job. So, you know, right now we're, we're we're following our mitigation protocols. Uh, we'll continue to do so. Uh, so a little bit of my timeline here, the test I took on Thursday this last week uh, was part of what we've been regularly doing. And uh, Dr. Goodlett informed me of my result. And uh, so we proceeded with the standard protocols for a positive test, uh, no different for me than anybody else in our program. Uh, as of right now, based off my timeline, uh, I should return to the facility on Monday of this next week. So uh, in time for game week and uh, preparing our team for that week of practice. Uh, no other coaches or players were quarantined based off my test result. Uh, that's due to our, in part of our mitigation protocols that we have in place uh, that, and that we've been following. So I'm proud of that. With our staff, that all needs to continue. Um, in terms of where we are as a program, all right, our vaccination numbers uh, continue to improve based on the hard work of a lot of people. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. And uh, this is ongoing and a daily focus that we continue to keep a priority in our program. So I do wanna take a moment. Uh, I've had some time to sit back and, and put some things down here uh, over the past few days, but I do wanna take a moment to talk to you about the proactive steps that we have been taking inside our program uh, on this front with COVID and the vaccinations. So first, let me be clear, uh, I am not anti-vaccine and any narrative along those lines is misinformed. I uh, fully support the choice for anyone to vaccinate, also support getting reliable data, driven information into the hands of those who still have questions about the vaccine. Anyone who has been in our facility knows that, simple. Uh, for months now, our staff um, has done a great job uh, going above and beyond and being proactive in providing reliable information to our players, our coaches, our staff about the vaccine. Uh, I provided an open platform for experts to come in and present information to speak to our players and staff about the vaccine. And so a few of these here, uh, so you all know some of the things that have been done. Uh, we're fortunate to have Dr. Goodlett as a resource uh, right in our facility. He's a member of the SEC Medical Guidance Task Force um, and a trusted medical expert. So on multiple occasions, Dr. Goodlett has presented to the team on vaccinations. We had Dr. Scott Harris, our state health officer, present to the team along with Dr. Michael Williams who is a cardiologist and a member of the College of Science uh, and Mathematics Dean's Leadership Council. Uh, our head athletic trainer, Robbie Stewart, has presented to the team on multiple occasions, including in conjunction with Dr. Goodlett. Our athletic director, Alan Green, has likewise had multiple audiences with our team. Uh, as recently as yesterday, Dr. Gu shared his candid thoughts on the vaccine with our team. Uh, that was by our invitation, and uh, we certainly appreciate him doing that. So we talked to our guys in, in uh, large groups, small groups. Uh, we've had coaches share real-life experiences uh, with the vaccine and 
uh, you know, what's happened in their lives because of that. I think uh, if you guys have it, you probably saw uh, a tweet from Coach Mason about being back and, uh, you know, his experience with COVID. And he shared that, which, you know, to me is another um, viewpoint that our players and people in our facility get a chance to hear. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's breakthrough cases at times, and we have to deal with that. You know, and that's something right now I think is, is going to be part of what we have to navigate through this entire season, um, as we've seen with, with Coach Vrabel and, and some other coaches that have had the same things come up, and, and not just coaches, but people in general. Uh, other information, you know, has ranged from articles from NFL players that are talking about the benefits of the vaccine, uh, local articles, on-campus protocols, videos from Dr. Catherine O'Neill, uh, the SEC Medical Guidance Task Force, um, and talking about the, the timeline and, and uh, the science behind the vaccine. So our players have had a chance and staff have had a chance to hear from that. Um, so much of this for everyone here is in response to specific questions we receive from players regarding the vaccine. All right, we've listened to our players and responded with data-driven responses to their questions. A lot of things have changed, as we know. Uh, it seems every day there's, there's a, a different um, view. And so there's a lot of information every single day. And so there's questions that, that need to be answered. <clears throat> so I'm proud of what we've done. Uh, you know, I've, I've shared kind of my position with, with our parents and have been able to you know, express some of the things that I've just told you with the families of our players. And you know, one of the things I told them just about my approach as the head coach is to treat their sons like he was my own. Uh, we got tough players and you know, this is a tough game, but at the same time, uh, I want them to know my position as the head coach. I understand it, it carries a lot of weight. And you know, I care deeply that Everybody on this in this program, the staff on this team and people we come in contact with, that they're safe, number one, and that we're doing what we can to make sure that that is uh, being focused on every single day. Uh, I care deeply that our players have the information that they need to make informed decisions uh, that affect them, and I support them. Uh, I care that we have a chance to play in every single game and work hard to go win every single one of those games. And so, you know, those are things that I've shared with our families and know that, uh, you know, I'm here for their sons. And, and also, uh, we're going to continue on with preparing ourselves for getting ready for September 4th uh, and having a chance to go play. So uh, I'm also aware of, you know, the recent news with the Pfizer vaccine with the FDA you know, that full approval. Uh, that information was shared as recently as yesterday with our team. So we're aware of that. Uh, and to be clear, like we, we take this matter very seriously between the vaccinations, our mitigations, we're committed to being safe in our building and enforcing and following the protocols that our medical team has put together. So right now we're testing twice, which I believe is more than any other. I don't know if it's this is facts, but I think uh, I'm not sure if, if other SEC schools are testing twice. Uh, we are right now. And you know, the, the last thing here um, is you know, the, the most important you know, is the safety of our players and the safety of the people in our building. And, and just know this, we, we can't issue um, mandates to our student athletes. You know, and I understand this to be Alabama law. I understand that you know, we cannot mandate vaccinations to our players. Uh, other states and universities can. Uh, we can't do that. Um, so that's not a football coach's decision. All right, that's a state by state, university by university decision. All right, and I'm aware of that. So, uh, and that's important that we understand that. I have a, a deep appreciation for our medical staff and what they're doing and how they're operating each and every day. And I've got a, a deep appreciation for the people in our community that are taking care of all of us and, and making sure that you know, we can be safe, we can be healthy, that we have opportunities to do the things we all wanna do. Um, there's a deep appreciation for that. And so 
I share this to, to let everyone know just what we've done and how we've been proactive in uh, our approach with COVID uh, in our information when it comes to vaccinations and, and making sure that um, you know, that's very clear moving forward. Uh, along the lines of, of some football here, we had a scrimmage. Uh, I'll give you a few highlights on that. In scrimmage two, some, uh, some things that came up are our number one offense uh, we had a really good day on, on third downs. Uh, so first and second down were also solid. I thought we operated and executed well, but our third down percentage, uh, we were about 60%, which is good. So it's always good to see a drive extended. That's been something that we focused on. So it was good to see the, the one offense go out there and, and continue drives, extend drives. We did a backed up portion in practice. And so we were, the goal was to get two first downs. Once we did that, we, we stopped. Uh, the drive, but uh, the one offense was on a drive to, to score. Uh, they had put themselves in a position to, to have great field position there. Um, you know, we had one penalty from the Blues, which is good. So we, we've been able to eliminate some penalties with that starting offense. And then uh, we got into a goal line situation, and it was good to see our one and two offense be able to execute down there on the goal line. So getting in the four-yard line, going in. Uh, the player of the day on offense was Jackson McFadden, had two touchdown catches. Uh, he's done a great job. He, he's, uh, he's holding for us right now, but he's been a, a very consistent player, and it's been good to see him step up. Defensively, um, now we had the blue, the blue defense, so our starting defense out there, uh, they were about 70% on stopping third down, so they had a really good day in some of those uh, critical situations, and you could tell that was a focus of that scrimmage uh, run defense was very good uh, held the offense to uh, under three yards a carry they had a couple interceptions in the red zone which is huge uh, those are drive killers right there and then we had two two minute opportunities and the defense came out on top on both of those uh, so that was good to practice that end of game scenarios special teams Anders, Anders Carlson was 100 percent on field goals uh, he's been great consistent all camp um, you know, he's, uh, you know, right there at the very top is one of our best players and uh, love his approach each and every day. I thought both of our punters, Aiden and Oscar, did a, a tremendous job of just ball placement. And uh, those guys have been consistent through fall camp. Uh, and then we're still working through our returners right now. Um, Donovan Coffin's back there, Nehemiah Pritchett, uh, Tank Bigsby, uh, Barr, Javarius Johnson back there. Um, and uh, Demetrius Robertson as well. So, and a few others that are getting reps, but those guys are, are getting some reps at punt return and kick return, uh, which has been good. And then you guys saw this morning, <clears throat> so we did have our two captains, permanent captains that were voted by the team. And that was Owen Papo and Chandler Wooten. And so both those guys will be the two permanent captains for the season. Uh, we will have two selected captains. Uh, and I've done it both ways. I've had four, I've had three, I've done it this way. Um, but I think it says a lot. I, I haven't had uh, two players necessarily on the same side. And, and I don't think this is, this is anything towards um, anyone on the offensive side. I just think that Chandler and Owen have been two guys that have really stepped up and have led. Uh, and you see that and they demonstrate it daily. They happen to be at the same position. And so I was very proud of those guys. I called them the other night. And I shared a video with the players, but I had talked to Chandler and Owen. And, and basically what I told them is there's, there's no greater honor than to be voted by your teammates as a captain. You're going to do great things in football. You're going to go on and, and continue to play and do all those things. But to have your teammates and your peers vote you as a captain, uh, in my opinion, there's no greater honor. And I told those guys, hey, I didn't know you when you were young growing up and uh, you were little kids and <clears throat> had these goals and dreams of playing division one football and playing for a place like Auburn, but look at you now and you got voted team captain. And so, you know, kind of, you know, for all of us in that moment, a little bit of chills, just excited for them and uh, know that they're going to do a tremendous job, you know, leading our team. So those are some highlights uh, that we have from, from the football part of it. Uh, we're into our <clears throat> workday Wednesday practice today, Tuesday uh, went well. Uh, we had to move inside because of lightning yesterday and the guys adjusted. Uh, I've been able to watch practice live, so I've got that, uh, which has been great. Uh, and actually, there, you know, the benefit 
I've been able to see some things that you don't always get to see when you get that bird's eye view. So I can see everybody and, and what's happening at practice. So I've had a lot of really good points uh, for our coaches as far as just what I see and, and things that we can do to improve. Um, and I'll continue that and we'll, we'll hit our situational plays today. Um, tomorrow we'll be in helmets. Friday, we're gonna do what we call a mock Friday, get ourselves prepared for what a day before the game would look like. And then Saturday is our uh, fan fest. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a normal Sunday and be ready to go this next week when we start into uh, actual game prep for, uh, for Akron. So we've been doing a little bit of that, but uh, the guys have responded well and uh, have appreciated our coaches stepping up and certainly what our players have been able to do. So with that, open up for questions. Coach, our first question is from Ryan Hennessy. <clears throat> Coach, uh, going into coming back Monday, obviously a first-year head coach with a first-year defensive coordinator, both of you guys out. Do you feel like with the game on September 4th, you're a bit behind the curve uh, compared to other SEC schools? Are you, are you worried about that? Is that a concern for you? Ideally, with uh, there's no question one of the hardest uh, schedules in the country. Well, let me say this. Regardless of, of our circumstances, I would feel like we're – we're always behind. That's just a, a natural feeling, right? You just, there's that urgency in that week of game prep when you know that deadline is coming, like, hey, where are we at? And, and you don't never, you never really know that until you go play. Um, what I'd say right now, I mean, no, do I feel like from an informational standpoint, from <clears throat> what we've been able to put in, no, because technology has allowed it. We, we've been through this before. So technology, the other coaches on staff, you know, one thing about the staff here is you have so many guys, you have analysts, you have GAs. There's, there's a lot of people that are on the staff that have been coordinators before. And so, um, like I said earlier, they've stepped up uh, game plan wise, information wise, all that meeting wise, uh, the players have gotten the information. Uh, but you never really know until you go out there and play. We, we've been going against each other so long. Um, you know, you got to go play somebody else. We finally got into scout teams yesterday, so we did split the team. We have, uh, we have scouters now that we're going against, so we're getting Akron look, uh, looks completely. Um, we do what we call service, so we do have, like, some of our backups that come in and give the scout looks, so you just get a little bit faster look um, from either side of the ball. But uh, no, I think, you know, Coach Smetting's done a very good job uh, on that side of the ball, making sure that everything is, is on track. Uh, you got Burt Watts, who's been a defensive coordinator. So you just, you got a lot of people that have really been able to, to keep this thing moving. Um, and I don't feel like we've slowed down there. And then obviously on the offensive side uh, with Coach Bobo, that they're, they're rolling, you know, they've got, um, their own things that they're focused on and, and trying to make sure that, that they get installed. So, um, no, I, I don't feel like, you know, we're necessarily behind. Um, I am excited to get back and, and be out there. I think there's a, a few things that, that we can clean up, um, like I said, but the, but the coaches have been on it and I've been able to watch it and communicate that. And, and even times in practice, you know, I'll get a hold of uh, Dana on the practice field and I can make a, a comment or a coaching point to someone out there immediately. So we're not just wasting reps like, hey, get this fixed. And, and the coaches have been great. They've been very receptive to that. Next, JG Tate. Yeah, Brian J. Tate from AuburnSports.com. Question about one of your captains. Obviously, it's pretty cool to have two defensive guys do that for your season long. But Chandler Wooten goes from opted out last year to a team captain now. That's a pretty big ascension. Talk about kind of how he's evolved since you've known him. So let me tell you, my first meeting with Chandler, uh, I knew that about him. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm questioning his commitment. The first time I met him, and just understand this, I didn't know him. And, and we had a great conversation. Uh, he's a family man. And, and I said, you know, what is it about you that, you know, I need to know? And he said, well, I, I can lead. I'm a leader. And, you know, from that point on, and he is part of our Tiger Club. He is on the leadership group. Um, from that point on, I don't know what it was. I, I think he and I connected, um, but he's been exactly that ever since I've known him. Uh, he works hard. He shows up every day. Um, you know, I've just, I, I've got a, I've got a deep appreciation for him. 
Uh, I care tremendously for him. I, I see him as a obviously a football player on this team, but just as a man, as a father. And um, and he was he, this was a special moment for him. Owen, it was as well. Owen is, you know, we love Owen. Owen's you know one of our uh, best players and, you know, continues to just do everything in his power to be the very best he can every day. But uh, both those guys, Chandler, especially, um, you know, I think we all learn. And I wasn't here before, but when I, like I told those guys when they came in, like, hey, it's a clean slate. It's a new opportunity for, for you to get to know me, for me to get to know you. This is our football team. And um, where he was to where he is now, I think his team feels the same way because they made that decision to choose him as a leader. So what he told me in the beginning um, is exactly what he is. And, and uh, you know, my goal is to continue to keep growing that relationship between he and I, and then allow him to be a part of this team and leading us uh, as we get into the season. Thank you. Next, Mark Murphy. Yeah. Coach, you've got eight defensive transfers or junior college transfers on defense, three on offense. How big a factor do you expect those guys to be this fall? They're all playing. Let, let me say that. I mean, you've got – so right now, I mean, like Donovan Kaufman is, is in that uh, starting role at nickel. All right, so you have a guy that came in. You've got um, Knighton that uh, is right there in that, you know, boundary safety role. That, that's right there in the mix. Um, Roe Torrance, you know, he's, he's right there uh, in the mix at corner. I mean, all, all these guys that came in, they're all in the one and two deep. So they're all in that two deep. Um, they're all contributing on special teams. Uh, you know, a guy like Tony Fair. Tony Fair came in and, and uh, had some things that he had to get better at, had to get himself in, in better shape and all that. And all that guy has done is work since he's got here uh, and has done everything that we've asked him to do. And, and you watch him out there, I mean, just his – Physically, he's better. Uh, mentally, he's better. And he can play. He's got experience. He's, he's been in games. And so I think that has helped some of those uh, older players. You know, when new guys come in, it's all new. It's fall camp is new. It's, boy, the schedule is long. There's just so much going on. you got to go from one thing to the next. And then, you know, you have some of these more experienced players that come in here, and they're like, this is what we do. And so I think that's what's helped those transfers. And I think that's, that's one of the benefit of a transfer is, you know, they, they kind of understand, you know, what it's supposed to look like. And so, hey, this is what we do. And they're able to get to uh, a lot of just the, the things that are necessary faster. Uh, but all those guys are there. They're in the two deep. Uh, expect them all to contribute and play. And that was the reason why we signed them. Bennett Drondo. <clears throat> hey, Brian. Uh, glad you're feeling OK. Um, you, you said Thank this you. Of course, uh, you said the team vaccination is up. Um, I'm just curious, is there an updated number for that with game week approaching right now? I don't have an updated number for you right now, but I know that every day it's, you know, there, there's been more. So it's gone up. I don't have that number for you. As we get into this next week, um, we'll, we'll have more of what that number is. But um, we, we've been increasing uh, daily. Well, we take that back. Not daily. We've been increasing all right, over the past several days. Bill Cameron. You mentioned a couple of things about the, uh, the depth chart, Coach. Uh, is the offensive line set, and how do you feel about them? We're not set yet, but I feel good. Uh, you know, right now we got – I'll, I'll kind of go through this. At left tackle, you have Austin Troxel and Killian Zaire, uh, those two guys uh, at that position. And I'm, just, I'm going to kind of just go too deep here. Um, left guard, you got Brandon Council, Alec Jackson, both those guys. Um, and and they're, they're all getting ones and two reps. So just be clear on that still. Uh, at center, you got Nick Brahms and Jalil Urban. Uh, right guard, you got Keandre Jones, Tayshawn Manning. Stutz is also in there as well. He's working between kind of right and left guard. Uh, and at right tackle, Broderius Ham and, and Brandon Coffey is where we are right now in that one and two deep. <clears throat> and so, Thanks. yeah, so that's, that's where we're sitting right now. And those guys, uh, and even today, you know, there's going to be some of those guys that we're working with our blues. Our blues are our starters. Um, going into that practice, they're going to be some of those guys that, that flip. They're going to flip-flop between orange and blue. Um, and so we'll have a chance to, to see that today and, 
you know, but, uh, you know, one of the guys I, I do want to point out, I think Austin Troxel has, has had a really good camp. Um, you know, he's, he's had some injuries, but he's, you know, we're going to hey, knock on wood here and he's taking care of himself. He's, he's a mature guy. He, he does what he's asked to do daily. And he's just, I think he's, he's getting himself better and better through every practice. Uh, I've appreciated Nick Brahms' consistency. Um, so now I think getting some of the guys to work with and communicate with, um, especially the guards to his left and right are going to help him because he's had some different combinations. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just Rodarius, uh, Coffee, both of those guys, you know, that, and uh, Alec Jackson, excuse me, not Alec Jackson, but Killian Zaire, all those guys playing tackle and the kind of that tackle rotation. We just, you know, we got to continue with that. We got to continue with, with making sure that those guys are getting reps kind of on both sides because if something happens, we can, we can bounce some guys around. Next is Jordan Hill. Brian, you mentioned Coach Mason testing positive. Have there been other coaches? And how many players, if any, have also tested positive? Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, I'm not going to get into just, you know, our, our personal, our personnel uh, and the positives and all that. But there's been, you know, we talked, I mean, there's, there's been breakthrough cases and, and very rare. Um, you know, we've had uh, – Right now, I mean, we're, we're in a good position right now. And so uh, just with the, the whole day-to-day -day operation and all that, um, but it's something, you know, we do have to stay on it. And, uh, you know, there's been guys that have been out, guys are back. So, I mean, right now our numbers and, and where we are are very good. Um, so, but I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get into, you know, just players and, and uh, who and all those things like that. We know about Coach Mason. Uh, I think that was important that, that he had, um, you know, that message because people had asked and um, we'll leave it at that. Coach, we had time for a couple more. Uh, first yeah. is Jason Caldwell. Well, you, you talked about kind of the offensive line and group. Um, what's it kind of look like a quarterback? Have you, you know, what have you seen, I guess, from those guys now through two scrimmages and, and uh, I guess the feel for that position? Sure. Well, right now, Bo and TJ, you know, those two guys are at the top. Um, Bo is uh, rolling with the Blues right now, so he's taking the number one reps. Uh, and, you know, just like I said before, going back to that second scrimmage, you know, I thought Bo did a great job. Just, you know, the third downs, the decision making, uh, those have been emphasized by Coach Bobo. Uh, and I feel like TJ, TJ has really come on. TJ's starting to, you know, I think he's played but he hadn't been in this system through the spring and had, had a, didn't have all that time. So just through the practices that we've had, you know, things are starting to click for TJ. I like where he's at. I like his mentality. Um, I think TJ's got really good command in the huddle and Bo's done a great job of that as well. So, you know, both those guys uh, have been pushing each other. And, um, but Bo is, Bo is rolling with the blues right now. We played a game right now. Bo would be starting. Uh, and I really like, you know, Demetrius Davis, he, as a young player, he continues to keep showing up. Uh, so you got three guys right now that are uh, Bo, obviously, in the position that he's in. You got TJ, who's coming on and, and, and developing uh, and just working on some fundamental things, but understands what we're doing and the decision making process, how important that is. And then uh, Demetrius Davis, I, I think I said this before, but he's just got some gamesmanship in him that, uh, you know, it's kind of that game within the game that he can play. So, you know, he's fun to watch. He's fun to coach. Um, there's some detail that, that still needs to continue to be focused on. But um, all three of those guys have, uh, have had a really good camp so far and feel good about where they're at. But I, I, I like Bo. I like, you know, his work ethic. I like his approach daily. He's been studying. And uh, I think those two guys, he and TJ and, and Demetrius coming along, those guys have been doing a really good job. Do you think – it would be one guy or is it so close that you might want to take a look at some guys or is that kind of remain to be seen? That remains to be seen. Let me, let me say this, just, you know, it's always, it's always one guy until it's, until it's not. That's, that's my opinion on it. Right. And that was uh, if you went back to, so Brett Rippon, I remember Montel Cozart came from Kansas, transferred to Boise state. And I said, we have a starter. He said, well, I want to win championships. And that was his goal to come in and just play for a championship. Well, 
Um, he was a guy that, you know, you wish you had in your program for four years, but we played both those guys. And Brett was clearly the starter, but Montel had a chance to come in and contribute. And, um, you know, that year Brett was knocked out of a game and Montel came in and played for us, uh, was able to win one. So, uh, like I've said before, if you deserve to play, we'll find a role. It's just the quarterback position's hard. You don't want to be splitting a bunch of time, but there, there may be opportunities for guys to get in there and have a role like some players on our team do. And uh, if those guys earn that and we do those things, then that's clearly for us to, uh, to better our offense, better whatever the, the play that we have and, and uh, the people that we have in to help us win. That's simply why we would do it. Coach, our last question is from John Zener. Yeah, Coach, I'm sorry to go back to the vaccination and COVID and all that, but do you feel like – Given the progress you all have made, there's a chance you can meet that 85% threshold. And do you worry that there might be a competitive disadvantage for because there are the different rules and, and some teams are at 100% or, or really close? I do believe we can get there. Um, I do believe, you know, through this whole thing, I just, I think there's going to be, you know, just some things that, and not just us, I think, you know, what we're experiencing right now, I think other teams are, are going to have to navigate as well. Uh, and so a little bit of, you know, maybe some of what we had to, we experienced last year. Um, I don't know that, but certainly uh, getting that, that number, uh, that 85% uh, helps with uh, not having to deal with that as much. So yes, I, I'm optimistic that uh, we'll approach that. And, you know, our, like I told you before, I mean, I think uh, the measures that we've taken to, to educate uh, and encourage what these guys have heard. Um, as I laid that out earlier, I mean, that's, that's been part of it. That will continue. Uh, and that's going to have to continue as the season goes on. We all know that um, because this hasn't gone away. Coach, we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, guys.